DJI's new drone, the DJI Neo, is a great little drone with lots of wonderful features, but it does have one fatal problem. Watch to find out what this potentially disastrous issue is and how to avoid it. DJI's newest drone offering, the DJI Neo, is great. You can fly it with a controller that you can attach to your phone like many other DJI cinematic drones. You can fly it with a controller with the built-in screen, the RC2 controller. You can fly it in FPV mode using the goggles and motion controller. You can even fly it in manual mode with the goggles and the FPV controller. Or, of course, and this is what makes this little drone so special, you can fly it without a controller at all. When doing this, you can either control it using your phone with virtual joysticks, or it can fly autonomously, doing all kinds of automated shots, like circle, follow, droney, rocket, etc., where it records the shot you've selected, then flies back to you for landing on the palm of your hand. But there's a fatal problem. And if you're not aware of this, you may very well lose or wreck your drone. When using the controller, just as with most other DJI drones, you can set the return to home height and set the maximum distance and height the drone will fly to, ensuring safe recovery if your controller loses connection or if your battery is low. Your drone will come back to where it started after flying up to a safe height to avoid obstacles and then land. But if you're flying without a controller, using the virtual joysticks on your phone, or using fully autonomous flight modes with no phone at all, this won't happen. When you're flying without a controller, your drone is either connected to your phone with a simple Wi-Fi connection, or it's not connected at all if just using the buttons on the drone without your phone. Now, as you probably know, Wi-Fi range is really limited. Meters instead of kilometers. Nowhere near OcuSync's many kilometers when using the controller. You only have a few dozen meters. What happens here, if your drone loses Wi-Fi connection with your phone while controlling it that way, it will simply stop. It will hover in place. And you will have to physically move towards the drone yourself to get close enough to get a connection again. But what if you can't do that? What if you've flown your drone over the edge of a cliff? or over water, or around some obstacle such as a fence that you can't physically get around. Now you're in trouble. Your drone will hover, and then when the battery gets low, it will simply land right where it is. Whether that's in the ocean, or off a mountain cliff, or behind a fence, or wherever, it may be unrecoverable, or it may be wrecked entirely if, for example, it lands in water. Likewise, if using the drone without a controller at all, it will simply land wherever it happens to be if the battery gets low, and that may be disastrous. Goodbye drone! So, how do you avoid this? First of all, it's really important to simply understand that without using the controller, your drone's safety features are really limited. This means you have to be entirely responsible for ensuring your drone safety so it gets back to you properly. In general, this means keep it close to you. Now, if using the autonomous flight modes, this usually isn't an issue. It keeps quite close to you automatically if everything goes well. But you still need to be aware of your surroundings. Don't let it fly off the edge of a cliff or into an obstacle. Remember, no obstacle avoidance sensors. Don't let it fly over water or into something that it's going to get tangled up in and get stuck. If it does and something happens, you may be heading home without a drone. Second, if you're using your phone with the virtual joysticks, keep it close. Don't let it potentially go out of Wi-Fi range. Remember, that's just a few dozen meters. And same thing again, keep it over areas where it won't get wrecked if it lands and where you can actually get to in order to recover it safely if it does land. Now that's all well and good. You're a responsible, safety-conscious drone owner. You are aware of danger to other people, danger to yourself, and danger to your drone. And you're flying in accordance to all laws and all regulations and all important safety considerations. 
But let's be honest, disasters can still strike. Stuff happens. A big gust of wind, a bird, some kind of sudden radio interference, all kinds of things. Despite all precautions, you may still end up losing this drone. Wind alone can wreak havoc on a drone this small and light. This is where DJI Care Refresh comes in really handy. It's essentially insurance for your drone, and for the Neo, it's really not expensive at all. I purchased DJI Care Refresh for all of my DJI products just for peace of mind. I've only had to use it once for a different drone, but when I did, it was an incredibly easy process and I had a new drone in my hands within a few days. And that alone has paid for all of the money I've spent on DJI Refresh for all the DJI products I happen to own. For the DJI Neo, the Care Refresh for one year here in Canada works out to just 22 US dollars. And for 38 US dollars, you get two years of peace of mind. In my opinion, a really great small investment. To sum up, this new drone from DJI is really great and with some adjustments, see my settings video for this, you can get some really very interesting video clips from it. But you do have to be sure you can recover it if disaster strikes. And you do have to be a bit more aware since you won't get software saving the day for you if you're not using the controller. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to hit those buttons down there so you'll be notified of upcoming videos. And be sure to share the link for this video on other sites if you think it might help others out as well. Whether that's Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, or somewhere else, it would be greatly appreciated. As always, thanks for watching, happy flying, and we'll see you next time.